you guys and welcome back to another episode of Lost Bits right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. In this video, we'll be having a look at another awesome Mario Kart game, Mario Kart 7. And I just realized that this is the first Lost Bits video covering a 3DS game on this channel. And also in this video, I have the absolute pleasure of having the Scuttlebug Coin Boy on board to help me out, Nathaniel Bandy. Hey guys, hope you're in the mood for some spicy, unused, and unseen content, cause we got lots of mind-blowing stuff to show ya! Wait, isn't the mind-blowing stuff in that other video we're making over on your channel? Eh, uh, yeah, of course, that's right. Go watch that, after this. And with all of that out of the way, go crank your 3DS 3D slider to the max, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, first things first, gotta get this out of the way. As much as I wish he was found somewhere hidden in the game, Waluigi is still missing from Mario Kart 7. To this day, I am absolutely baffled that he's not playable in Mario Kart 7. But hey, at least we got Wiggler... and... Honey Queen? Yikes. Anyways, to really start things off, let's have a listen to the unused audio from Mario Kart 7. First up is an unused sound file, which based on its name appears to have been intended to be used as a tone for numbers 10, 9, and 8 in a countdown starting from 10 seconds. This sound is apparently identical to one heard in Mario Kart Wii, and it's believed that it was simply just carried over to Mario Kart 7. The other unused audio file is a song that is believed to have been some sort of beta theme. If that song sounds familiar to you, it's because it's a remix of the Mario Kart Wii main menu track. And if you're thinking, uh, no, I definitely heard that track in the multiplayer download play course select menu, you're kind of right. Although very similar, this track is actually bass boosted in a lower pitch and isn't as upbeat as the one that is used in download play. Mario Kart 7 actually has some items that were scrapped too. The game lists item functions for a fake box, very likely a fake item box, and big kinoko, which translates to big mushroom. So this was probably for the mega mushroom item. So if you're on team, I wish fake item boxes were still in Mario Kart games like I am, maybe you'll find at least some solace in knowing that they were at least planned for this game in some capacity. That being said, just like the countdown sound, both of these items may have just been carried over from Mario Kart Wii seeing as how they are both found here. And speaking of items, did you know that Mario Kart 7 actually has 16 special cases for item box odds, with only one of them actually being used? So if you've played a Mario Kart game before, you're probably aware that your odds of getting certain items changes depending on what place you're in. But there are exceptions to the standard item distribution odds, like in Luigi's Raceway in Mario Kart 64, where regardless of what place you're in, if you get the box attached to the hot air balloon in the course, you'll always get a blue shell. Yes, even if you're in first place. The only special case in Mario Kart 7 is for the item box found on this hill in the DK Pass course from the DS. This special item box has a 35% chance of getting a single mushroom, 35% chance of getting a triple mushroom, and 30% chance of getting a star. Either way, it guarantees the player one of these items, regardless of which place they're in. The other special cases found in the game offer other probability spreads or guaranteeing certain items, like always getting the lightning power up, which would obviously be pretty overpowered. It is believed that just like in Mario Kart Wii, these special cases were planned to have been used in special tournaments, but this never ended up happening. Interestingly, the item probability file also makes reference to two test items, Test 3 and Test 4, with absolutely zero probability appearing in any of the cases. Forcing the game to load them results in getting a star icon, but nothing seems to happen when the item is used. Since there are two slots, my assumption is that these were meant for the fake item box and Mega Mushroom we discussed earlier. And while still on the topic of items, certain odd and unused item functions can be seen where these items aren't normally supposed to be obtained. 
This is of course when race only items are forced into the game's battle modes. These race only items are the bullet bills, lightning, and the blue spiny shell. When fired, since there's nobody really in first place, based on distance like in a race, the blue spiny shell just bounces around like a regular green shell, although it's much faster and has a bigger hitbox. Another awesome ability it has occurs when it manages to find its way out of a battle course and out of the course's skybox. The ability is called Freeze Game. Similarly, since the battle courses don't have a linear track to follow like in a race, the bullet bill item doesn't really know how to act normally. It will instead follow a route similar to that which computer controlled characters take and will last infinitely. So you better hope some players fall right into your path. If you use a bullet bill and get caught on something though, good luck trying to get out. And lastly is the lightning power up which shocks every opposing player, just like in a race. Although it does damage everyone else, it won't always award you with a point for each player. And unlike in a race, players hit will not shrink and they still retain their items. Next, let's go over the game's unused graphics and models. First for the graphics is a dummy test image that features an early version of Mario Circuit. And yes, it's found rotated like this, but let's turn it so it's easier to look at. Notable differences and oddities here include that the shadow of the finish line banner is missing and appears to be glitching the textures on the ground, Mario is racing himself, which is impossible in the game unless playing online, and there appears to be four item boxes up ahead instead of five like we see in the final game. There's also these two unused dummy graphics for the character emblems. Yeah, really cool, huh? These guys are both found at 32 by 32 pixels each, which is actually half the dimensions of the other emblems found in the game, which are at 64 by 64 pixels. Even though the sizes are different, these dummy graphics were very likely used either as placeholders or as templates for making the emblems for each character. And now onto some of the game's unused models. First up is a blue Koopa shell. It doesn't have spikes like the spiny shell does, so it's basically just a recolored standard red or green Koopa shell. This model can still be loaded into the game to replace an existing item, so here's how it acts when it replaces the green shell. It's hard to say exactly what this could have been for, but my best guess is that it was just an early placeholder for the blue spiny shell before it was finished. Next up is an unused model of a soccer ball. Huh. We also saw an unused soccer ball in Super Mario Sunshine. Weird how Nintendo keeps hiding these soccer balls in their game, but won't make another Super Mario Strikers game. This same model can be found in Nintendogs Plus Cats, suggesting that it was just left over from that game as both games were being developed at a similar time. Or maybe the developers were playing around with a soccer type game, but where the players would kick the ball around while driving a car. Nah, that's a stupid idea. Next is an unused model of what appears to be an early textureless version of the garage seen in the background during the character and cart selection phase. One key difference here is that the door is seen on the right of the room instead of behind as seen in the final version. It also contains what looks like a stack of tires, as well as some fancy looking cables or ropes hanging from the ceiling. Mario Kart 7 also has an unused course, which is basically an early version of Mario Circuit known as Mario Circuit Divide. I wasn't able to load this course, but YouTuber PabloMK7 has, and he made an awesome video comparing the unused early version with the final one. As you can see, shading and lighting are almost non-existent or mediocre, ramps and background objects are missing, Goombas seem larger, and of course, the bottom screen graphic is nowhere near finished. Also, the iconic blooming pink trees and falling leaves weren't added into this early build yet, and normal boring old trees are used instead. This is clearly just an early version of Mario Circuit, but it's just weird that it's still left over in the game's files. Alright, and as usual for the last stop in this video with a special code made by FishGuy6564, let's move the camera around to take a closer and further look at some cool parts of a few of the game's courses. So there is a total of 36 race courses in Mario Kart 7, plus the battle courses. So in the interest of time, we'll just be skipping the courses that don't really have anything of interest to see or talk about. First track, of course, is Toad Circuit. 
Have you ever really wanted to have a really uncomfortably close look at the toad balloon? No? Well here you go anyway! After we take his head off, I think it's really cool how the lighting and textures work together here to really make this look like a real balloon. It looks really good for a 3DS game, I gotta say. We can also have a closer look at the spectators. This looks similar to what we saw in Mario Kart Double Dash, where certain rows of characters are just copy and pasted around sporadically over top of some colorful blobs. Now you'd think if you were less than a kilometer from the sun, things would be pretty toasty, to say the least, right? Well, that doesn't seem to be the case here. By moving the camera towards the sun, we can see that it's really not too far from the course. Hey, don't you know you're not supposed to stare at the sun? Ugh, well, anyways, the last interesting thing from this course is actually found below, where we can't normally see. For some reason, some of the objects here, like these giant mushrooms and these signs, extend below the ground and taper off sharply. Like, the mushrooms look pretty weird, and I have no idea why these signs have to go so far underground. Next up is Daisy Hills. <laughs> All might seem normal in this quaint mountainside village, but beneath it lies a sinister secret. Yep, much of the chorus is mirrored here, almost like some sort of alternate mirror world dimension. If you haven't already guessed, this is the technique Mario Kart 7 uses to create the illusion of the reflection on water or ice. Even some of the signs are mirrored and flipped. This is exactly like we saw in Mario Kart 64, where some models that appear to be reflection were actually entirely copied and flipped underground. Pretty cool developer trick. Another kind of weird thing found in several courses are the Miis. They might look fine at first glance, but after moving around them, you can see that they are limbless, their heads are detached, and they have faces on both sides of their heads. So they can watch you... wherever you go. Just like the sun, in Shy Guy Bazaar we can also find that the moon is not too far from where the race occurs. So I know there are some people that think the Earth is flat, but looks like it was actually the moon that was flat all along. Another really cool trick is seen in Rock Rock Mountain in generating this lighting effect in the cave section. Turns out they're all just white cones, co figure. There is not too much to see in Piranha Plant Slide, but I thought it was kind of cool to see that with the course having a sort of warp pipe theme, the skybox of the course makes it appear that the whole area is inside of a warp pipe. Not sure if it was intentional or not, but I think it still fits the level theme perfectly. Next is Neo Bowser City, one of the most aesthetic levels in the game. And this course is home to not one, but two large monitors that display whatever the camera is seeing. Although it was harder to focus on, the one attached to the blimp I thought was especially interesting. By now you probably know how much I love finding these things and playing around with them. Also, the screen that appeared in Luigi's Raceway in Mario Kart 64 also makes a comeback in its remake in this game, and it's just as trippy as ever. It seems like the sun really likes to come back into discussion in this video. In the Makawuhu track, this time the sun appears a bit more... wobbly as it's setting. And now we can look at those wobbles up close. In Waifu's Ice World, we can also have a closer look at what looks like Gateway Galaxy's starting planet from Super Mario Galaxy. Much like a lot of other things in this game, it is again just another flat image if we look at it from another angle, but nonetheless, I really appreciate this reference to Super Mario Galaxy. Oh yeah, so one weird thing that I haven't mentioned yet actually occurs in every course. For some reason, when I move the camera outside of the skybox, what's normally just a void in most games here turns into... the... bottom screen? Yeah, for whatever reason, the layer behind the skybox is a fully functioning bottom screen. This really goofed me up the first time that I saw it. Now onto some of the retro tracks. Bowser Castle 1 is a fairly flat and simple course, but I always wondered what the course looked like beyond the windows that you can see throughout the course. Although again, pretty simple, I find something almost majestic about seeing this backdrop from closer up. The only strange thing I saw in Mushroom Gorge is that a few of the mushrooms in this here area appear to be held up by some metal support structure instead of the normal stems. 
Maybe all of these giant mushrooms are actually mechanical structures and not real mushrooms. So I just recently replayed Luigi's Mansion for my BitLift video on it, so I was excited to check out the Luigi's Mansion course here as well. The mansion itself looks pretty good. That is until we move up and see that it doesn't have a roof and the entire back of the house isn't textured either. Unfortunately, none of the doors lead to anywhere, but I guess I really wasn't expecting much anyway. One thing that was really cool to see in a different perspective in this chorus is the skybox, which glows as the lightning strikes flash. The skybox really adds to the whole feel of the stage. And yet again, here we see another moon just behind the mansion, which you guessed it, is flat as paper. Have you ever stopped to see what's in this store? You know, the one that's a shortcut in Coconut Mall and see what it actually sells? Well, this isn't really on scene, technically, but if we look closely and squint hard enough, we can see that this store sells what appears to be some low-poly suits and... sailor outfits? I have never seen a store sell suits and sailor outfits in a mall, but whatever you say, Nintendo. Also, it's interesting to note that the road in front of the mall actually stretches way beyond the borders of the map, and goes on and on for quite a while in both directions. Next is Waluigi Pinball, what I think is one of the best Mario Kart tracks of all time. Before making this video, I would have probably bet money that the giant Waluigi on top of the slot machine was a 3D model. But at this point, it's no surprise that Wah Boy himself here is also just 2D. Come on Nintendo, you didn't even include him in this game, you could have at least taken some time to model him here. Another track I had fun exploring in the past was Daisy's Cruiser from Mario Kart Double Dash. Much of the course remains the same here, and although the safety boats are no longer with us, the Daisy art on the side of the boat we normally don't get to even see is still present. So at first I thought it was kinda weird that these Miis just stare at you as you race, but then when checking inside their rooms, I saw there is no way out for them. Is it possible that they are just some sort of attraction to see on this ship? Is Daisy holding them against their will? And lastly, like in my other Mario Kart Lost Bits, let's end things off by having a look at this game's Rainbow Road course. Here things are switched up a bit, as finally the moons and planets and stuff aren't just 2D images. Unfortunately, there's nothing hidden outside of the skybox here like there was in Mario Kart Double Dash, but it was really fun to just explore the giant moons. Here is one final zoom out of this visually beautiful course. And with that guys concludes this Lost Bits video on Mario Kart 7 and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to let me know with a like down below and also comment what other games you would like to see me make a video on next. Also, a special big thank you to Nathaniel Bandy for helping out in today's video. If you're hungry for more Mario Kart 7 goodness, be sure to click on the card right here to be taken to his newest How Mario Kart 7 is Mind-Blowing video, in which yours truly also makes an appearance. And hey, if you're new here and would like to stay even more up to date with me and the channel, be sure to subscribe as well as follow me over on my other social media things which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.